And I remember when she said that, or I remember at that night, as we're doing sit up, the girl who, re- who got that scripture said, oh, y'all, guess what so-and-so um, sent me today? Guess what she sent me today? When I was talking to her, she sent me a scripture. I don't know why she sent me the scripture. Jesus ain't here. God ain't here. Hey, it's your girl, Lala Jenkins, back with another YouTube video. So in this video, this is actually part five of my Denouncing Testimony series, okay? But before I actually get into the series, if you have not already, hit that subscribe button for your girl one time for the one time. So this is actually, like I said, part five of my don't. I want to say don't be deceived, but hey, it's the same thing, denouncing testimony series. And I actually brought my friend Tori on to share her story. She is an ex aka. Oh, hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, bring it back. Because the Holy Spirit said there are people who do not know me. So my name is Lala, okay? And I actually crossed into Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated in spring 2008. Yep. And I denounced in fall of 2021, okay? And so ever since I've denounced, the Lord has had me speaking out against the Greek organizations. And so I have my friend Tori on and she's actually going to share her denouncing story. And so everybody give it up for Tori. Thank you so much, Tori, for joining and sharing your testimony and being bold and going forth with what God has has told you to go forth with. (laughs) Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. A little nervous, but I'm not, you know, the Lord, he got me. So I'm excited. Got you. Yes, he does. So this is actually going to be, I always say this, this is going to be like a conversation. So it's not like an interview type recording. It's going to actually mm-hmm. just be a conversation. We're just going to be chopping it up. Is that, that's, that's okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. That's okay. perfect. So the first question I actually want to know is how did you get introduced to Greek life? Okay. So how did I get introduced to Greek life? Um, so in high school, I went to, so I'm from Houston, Texas. So, um, in high school around 2005 to 2009, so I graduated 2009, but in high school, I was a part of something called wild PA, which is a step team. So young ladies for positive action. That's what the acronym stands for. And being a part of this step team, I was introduced to my mentor um, and someone that I look up to. I still talk to her today. Her daughter was in my wedding. Like she's an AKA. And so I was introduced to her. She was our advisor for YLPA. And in the organization, it was, that was kind of my introduction into like understanding Greek life. Because, you know, for many of you who have or not seen There are high schools who have step teams and they do strolls and they do like all of it. So I like to say that it was like the indoctrination of the children into like the whole like Greek experience. While we weren't doing the parties and all that extra other stuff, it was definitely kind of my first introduction into my mentor who was an AKA. I looked up to her and I was like, oh, I want to be just like her. So I want to do this organization. And then the little stuff that we did, like the, the steps that we did, um, there's a Delta step that I believe is up to still do. That was our step that we have to, um, we have to try out to like, so it's a whole thing is there's Greek members who graduate from college, they become teachers. And then, you know, they are advisors to different organizations and they have influence over, over the youth. And so that's kind of how I was introduced into the organization. I had friends also who were in Delta Gym. I was like also a program. And so she had always said like, oh, I want to be a Delta. So she was also another introduction into like, oh, this is a thing. You can go to college and you can be a part of this organization. So for me, I just saw that part. I just saw, I love my mentor. She's so cool. I want to be just like her. Um, And so with that, there was the whole like stepping and that experience that kind of introduced me to what is being in a, what it means to not really what it means to be but being in a Greek organization and being connected to one wow you know what's so crazy about the story that is my exact story into okay. Greek life. like I was on the step team in high school and we were called the devastating divas mm-hmm. <laughs> actually and I think I think that's what I think that's what the deltas were called devastating mm-hmm. divas maybe yeah um, but our advisor was an AKA. And so we did all AKA struts, all AKA yeah. 
like our poses, like when we would pose on the step team, like we would do. Yes, literally like. like yeah, what? and babies and all of that, like as our checkup and. Yeah. Doing the yeah. show. Stuff. Girl, yeah. Okay. And it was just that we were definitely like being groomed into mm -hmm. Greek before we even knew what Greek mm -hmm. life was. So crazy. Mm -hmm. I know it is. Her husband is so my advisor at the time. Um, and it was started before her. I, I believe it was probably started by a Delta because of the tryouts and like the stuff that we have to do. But um, her husband, he's a captain. He said one day he was like watching one of our shows and watching our mannerisms, like the things that we were doing. And he's like, oh, all those girls going to be AKs when they go to uh, college. And I didn't, I didn't know what it meant, but I'm like, oh yeah, like that's, that's cool for you. He probably yeah. your life. Wow. Yeah. And, and it's funny because even the pledging, like we were making each other do exercises and stuff like that, but it was all like kind of the introduction into what it would be like once you go to the actual real like chapter and try to be a part of that experience. Oh, so you, so you, you did, you did the step team in high school. And so how in did high school college so like what happened like when you go like what college did you go to and like what happened when you got to mm -hmm. so I'm from Houston and I went to school in San Antonio so I went to the University of Texas at San Antonio um and I started off there in fall 2009 and I definitely so I and I didn't start with this and I want to start with this um all of the ladies a lot of mentors that I have are people I look up to at my church currently when I started going there, they will always say everything is spiritual. And I was like, what? Like, everything is not spiritual. Some stuff is just like, there's a distinction, but everything really is spiritual. Um, and I, I think for a lot of believers, we don't realize that everything has a connection to the spiritual realm. It does. And so when I started off in college, I went to UTSA um, and I started attending events. I started attending AKA events because I'd already knew coming in like, oh, I want to be in this organization. And little different people had told me, oh, well, you got to be discreet and you can't say certain things. Um, and that's a big word in the, the Greek culture or at least MPHC, being discreet, not really telling people, being on the low key about it. So um, I started going to events. I worked with someone who was in the organization um, and one day, while working with her, there was another girl who was interested in Delta who I was, I was friends with and we're fresh and I'm a freshman. And so we get on the elevator and the young lady says, so the young lady who wants to be in Delta, um, she says to the AKA who's wearing an AKA hat, like, oh, so-and-so, Tori, Tori likes your hat. And I was like, uh, -uh I don't like your hat. Like, no, I don't like it. Cause I knew you can't say that. Like you can't, you need to be discreet. You can't say that. So I was like, no, I don't like your hat. She's lying. She's a liar. Like, I don't like your hat. But this, this it was already the spirit of deception that was like starting the, the lies of, even though it's, it's people would say, oh no, that's not even that big of a deal, but it is because I already started like, okay, no, I can't do certain things. I can't say certain things. So in this elevator, I'm really lying. Like, I love your hat because I want to be a part, but that for that young lady who was an AKA, that is why she started inviting me to things. That is why she started like, oh, okay. So I see, she told me, I think one day, like, you know, because you didn't, because you didn't say anything, like I knew that you would be, it would be good. I knew that you would probably be a good person to kind of go through the process and be a part of whatever. That and some other stuff, but that was one of the reasons why she started kind of inviting me to an event. And so that's kind of how I started my introduction into the chapter. Um, the not it wasn't necessarily the pre-pledging process, but it was kind of the girls starting to see who's interested and who's gonna come and who's consistent. So that's kind of how I got connected. Mm, my lord. So <laughs> you um so I want to point out the Holy Spirit. So the 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 aka. Mm -hmm that you were a good prospect because you were good at lying that's what I spiritually yeah because we always tell people that like this it, it I that's what came to me before I even got on here like the deception that was starting to be because there's deception throughout the entire 
pleasant process, yeah. the underground process. And that's what came to my spirit of, like, you started lying from the beginning. Like, you started lying and being somebody that you weren't called to be from the beginning so that you could get into the organization. Wow. You knew there that you couldn't say that to her. So you lied on the elevator. And let's say if I didn't lie, then there was probably, if I did say like, oh yeah, I really love your hat. Knowing the mindset that I was in in college and the the, the other women in the organization, that would have been like, boom, oh, no, no. I'm not going to pick her because she talked too much. Right? So that is the connection like that I made spiritually. Like, wow, I started lying from the beginning. <laughs> No, for real. Yeah. You, you, st- you start showing your, you start sh- so showing your interest. Start interest, yeah. What was the, I guess, the pre-pledge process like? Mm-hmm. So the pre-pledge process, and I'm looking down at my notes because I like, I'm a note taker and I'm like, okay, let me remember all of this. Bring it back to memory, Lord. So the pre-pledge process, um, I got to school fall 2009 and then that fall 2010, around August, is when um, I was, I got a call to basically come to this house at nighttime and don't tell nobody and come here. So I knew, I think I might have called, I don't know if I called my mentor from, from um, high school, but I kind of already knew. There were things that people had told me, like what would happen. So I knew, okay, I can't call nobody, like I need to go. So I went that night, um, and so that kind of started the whole pre-pledging process. They asked me some questions. They tried to fill me out to see if I would be good at the whole pledging and keep it a secret. Um, and it was they meaning like the chapter, the the ladies who were in the chapter at that time. It was dark outside. It was nighttime. Spiritually connecting to it's always night when you go into set. It's always dark. It's always darkness. And so that is what happened. Like I started. I started going and meeting with them and we started um, doing kind of our pre-pledging process. It was me and like five other ladies. Um, And before the first night, which is so crazy, before the, before I went that first night, I asked God, I was like, God, now if there's anything crazy or sad or anything that happens against you, then just, just show it to me and I'll be out of the door. Like I'll be out. And I remember, um, I got a journal when I was graduating from high school. Um, and in two, so in 2009, I was heavy in writing sermons and scriptures and I was journaling to God. And that 2010 mark until like 2012, it was like nothing in there. It was, I didn't, that the connection to God for me, I feel like was, there was a disconnection. So when I went, to that first night I prayed I had prayed or said that out loud to God and we were doing sit-ups on the floor so and um one of my sorority or line sisters at the time she had been driving around one of the members and I guess one of the members told her that she was having a hard day or a hard time something was happening in her life and my sorority sister or my line sister had said a scripture to her she either texts her the scripture or she said it to her in the in the car like a so for encouragement and I remember when she said that or I remember at that night as we're doing sit up the girl who, re- who got that scripture said oh y'all guess what so-and-so um sent me today guess what she sent me today when I was talking to her she sent me a scripture I don't know why she sent me the scripture Jesus ain't here God ain't here and that I remember that because I stopped doing sit-ups. And I was like, is this it? This is this is the moment. And then the girl was like, oh no. And they started laughing. She's like, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it's still like the Lord, hey, that was that was the first, that was your first flag. And it doesn't matter if she's just kidding, because I think this, I think she's a believer now, this person who said this, but it's still like you shouldn't even be playing like that. And she said that. She's like, God ain't here. I don't know why she sent that scripture. Jesus ain't here. And I was just like, what? And then I started, I ignored it. And I kept going because they laughed it off and they said, just kidding. And I was just like, okay. Okay. So you do the the pre-haze and the pre-pledging. Mm-hmm. 
it's actually time for you to make lines. So what happens after you, you know, get the call that you made it and you start, you know, I guess pledging. Yeah. So um, that first night, I don't think everybody was there. So that was like really like the pre-pledging and still we didn't hear some stuff for a little while. And then there was the pledging process that started where we started receiving people's phone numbers. They were texting us. They were asking us to run errands. We were taking people places. We were buying people food. And one of the things that, um, <laughs> one of the things I remember is my, one of my line sisters at the time saying like, oh yeah, I told them I didn't have any money. Cause they had asked during the pre-pledging process, like, oh, who's going to pay for this? Cause it's going to cost. So who's going to pay for this? And I was like, my mom, like a little freshman or a little sophomore, just like, I don't know about mom. And I remember my line sister saying like, oh no, I told them. I don't have no money. I don't know. Lying. Cause she's like, I don't want them to know I have money so then they can use all my money during the pledging process, basically. So there's some stuff that I really did not know. My parents aren't um in Greek organizations. They have friends who are, but there's things that you still don't really know if you're not a part. So that's kind of the pledging process was the errand, running errands and meeting up, having set every night. Um there was so going back to the whole everything is spiritual it was all about chaos it was confusion there was no peace we weren't sleeping we were scared we were angry we were frustrated it was literally the complete opposite of the fruit of the spirit so for the believers who are on the fence and they're like really trying to in their mind say that this is okay it was literally everything that it was truly against the spirit of god like it was confusion um, and we know the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, uh, goodness, faithfulness, all that stuff was not a part of that process, the underground process. It was not a part of that at all. Um, I even got into a car accident um, and it wasn't a, it wasn't um, a major car accident, but I was so tired that I don't know. I think I was going to pick up somebody and I kind of skidded off the road and my tires messed up. So I had to replace two tires and my parents had to drive from Houston to San Antonio. They came and saw me. And even then, unfortunately, they knew what was going on, but they kind of, they was just like, oh, I told them it, me being a really good, I was a really good child. I always got good grades. So they trusted me. So it wasn't, if I, Tori wasn't worried, if Tori wasn't saying this was wrong, then they wasn't really, they were like, okay, it's cool. She'll be, she'll be all right. And I lost my gun. I lost my job while online. I was an RA. I lost it in and I gained it back. Thank you, Lord. But I was an RA and I was sleeping at the front desk. Every week we had our, our shift and I had blankets and I would be sleeping. I was tired. I would be sleeping at the front desk. And some of my friends knew I was online, so they would help. They would probably like, they would be on call for me and little stuff like that. But one of my, um, somebody from one of my managers saw me sleeping and he's in a Greek organization and he was like so he took me in the room talked to me and then I ended up not having a job <laughs> by the end of the semester he was like uh-uh I don't know what's going on but you can't be sleeping at the desk <laughs> and then I got fired uh, what and he great though <laughs> yeah and I mean he was like uh-uh no what? he should though we yeah are yeah and, no. and I, I think at the time I don't know if it I think people had ink, like thought of maybe had inklings about what was going on but I don't I don't I didn't tell him or anything like that so okay so he probably didn't know yeah but yeah I, I want to comment on like the having a car wreck and mm -hmm. because that is something that happened during my process as well and it was deemed as normal like mm -hmm has accidents every line somebody always falls asleep while they're drunk yeah. every line something dramatic always happens and yeah. normalize when you pledge in that you can you can lose your life literally yes exactly that's why I feel bad that my parents didn't know the the magnitude of what was really like going on yeah my mom my mom didn't know she knew I was online she didn't mm -hmm. The details of being online, but you know, she was just, she would call me every morning and be like, I'm just calling to make sure you are right. That's it. Yeah. No, but it wasn't, it wasn't a call to be like, yeah. we'll be doing this. 
What yeah. are you why are you staying up at nighttime? Why you ain't got no money? All of that. Yeah, exactly. Job too, but my manager, like, I had to. T- I told. I had to tell her. I told. I was like, I have to tell you I'm online, like, cause uh-huh. I a job. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I got bills. So I told her, and like after I crossed, she was like, Don't you ever do that again? Cause I was yeah. like, Listen, in the back, sleep. Supposed to be on the phone. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think I was on a probationary period or something where they put me on, so I had to work over the summer to like try to keep my job as an RA in the next fall, which I was able to. So it's like they gave me a chance, but they all no, nah, they really just like. So I actually didn't get the job for the fall, but because I did a good job in the summer, I was good. Okay, okay. What did, I, I even know. fell asleep in a, a Whataburger drive drive through girl. Um, it was so bad. And I think back like, oh my God, this is horrible. We were getting food and it was me and another, um, my other line sister at the time. And we fell, we ordered the food and then we fell asleep in the line. And the people, I don't know how long we were asleep, but they had to come and knock on the window because we was that sleep. They knocked on the window and we like woke up and he was like, can y'all drive ahead? It, it had to be at least 10 minutes, minimally. And we were like, oh my God, we just fell asleep in this Whataburger. How yeah. about I fell asleep at a stoplight? <laughs> I fell asleep with my foot on the brake. Oh my God. Front at the stoplight, there was a whole b- bunch of cars behind me. And somebody got out that car and bammed on my window. And oh. I looked up. The light is green. I'm looking at all these cars that are like turned outward to go around me. And I'm now I'm thinking like, what if while I was sleeping, yes. break and went into oncoming traffic? Like yep. it's crazy. It's okay. Crazy. So did you want to? So that's that's a little bit of like the underground process. That's pretty much the that's pretty much what the underground process is. But did you were there any like above ground like points? Mm-hmm. Remember, like when you were you were pledging. Um, so we did a lot of like meetings with the grad chapter, um, above ground, the deception, the lies, trying to make sure we look like we need to look. Don't tell them. Y'all need to make sure your hair is done. Your face, you don't look crazy. Even though we was over here not able to touch certain stuff or eat certain things, it was just, like losing weight clearly. Um, but then going to these meetings and learning about the organization, the actual, I guess, the bylaws, the constitution, the actual stuff, but then also at nighttime learning about this underground, these underground things. And um, so that was kind of the experience of just trying to make sure that pe- we didn't get caught. Um, and there's a part that I actually forgot, like we were initiated in one semester, but because of some things because people didn't trust that there was a letter or something that came out um about our 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 line and so the girls were like well we're not gonna we're not gonna pledge y'all anymore we're just gonna y'all gonna cross and y'all gonna be paper so you know for us it's now it's fear and we're 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 sad and nobody's gonna like us and all this stuff um and so we crossed we we joined aka officially in November 2010, but we were still fighting to be online to go back to that chaos and that confusion so that we can be made and be a part of this sisterhood. But it was literally more chaos to get to this sisterhood. Um, so it was just like we were we crossed, but it didn't matter because we didn't finish the underground process. So that's kind of like what happened even during the what happened even after joining the organization actually yeah so for those that may you know may not be familiar with the you know above ground versus underground Mm -hmm. have an above ground process um you are not you're you're considered paper you Mm -hmm. you respected as a member of the sorority you um do you're not deemed as as earned your letters you didn't work to earn your letters so that that's the shift. Like if you don't have an underground process, if you don't get beat, if you don't get talked to crazy, if you don't do nothing crazy, <laughs> yeah, you are not worthy to wear the organization's letters. Okay. And so that whole dynamic in itself is not of God. Yeah. 
Period. You don't, you shouldn't have to get beat, get talked to, spend all your money and, and all of this for some letters when you already, we already got everything that we need in Christ Jesus. Right. And I think that for me, that was the God revealed, like that was where the idolatry for me started. Um, and the self-righteousness is during that pledging process, the ego and the pride, those spirits started and man, it started manifesting in me because as I'm going through this underground process and above ground process, I'm looking at other girls. I'm walking to class like, oh, I'm better than her. Like, I'm I'm this, I'm that because I'm about to be in this organization. And I've always been God's child. I grew up in the church, but now I have this, this confidence about myself because of this specific thing versus having a confidence about myself because of the love of Christ that he has for me. So I, that, that started manifesting in me. Um, and I think it manifests in a lot of people who are in denial. Like there's a draw that people have to these organizations because of for, connected to self-worth. Yeah. And people try to say like, oh no, it's because I want brothers or sisters. No, there's also this level of like, I want to join because it's going to make me being on campus better than people and all this stuff. And, and those are all spirits that, you know, God speaks again in his word. Yeah, that's so true. So you, you go through the, the above ground and then the next mm-hmm. the underground. So how is life in the sorority? Like after you cross, yeah. how was, how was, how was life on campus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so life after crossing was, um, I say once we finally were also done with the underground process, like the full life was, going to chapter meetings, doing community service. It started to seem like a normal student organization that you have meetings, you go to events, you you host things. Um, and so there were things that I learned and some skill set that I built because of that aspect of the organization. Um, it became very just routine. And I was set on like being the best. So I ran for MPHC president. I became the chapter president. I also ran for a national position in the sorority. So um, one of the summers I had to go to a national conference and speak in front of all of the members to become undergraduate member at large. There's three positions in AKA that undergraduates can hold nationally. There's the um, second vice president, which is um, a, one under, a, an undergrad person, which is right behind the first vice president, which is the next president. And then there's also undergraduate members at large, two of those roles. So I was in that position. I was traveling, going to conferences. So all of my free time was focused on the organization. It was class and it was starting to get hard to balance class because I was overly involved on campus. And then I also started um, the whole national role. And for me, like that was, again, also building into this idolatry because I was doing all of that and was not going to church. I was doing all of that. And what was what I knew I needed to do was for AKA. Like I need to make sure I did these events and went to these chapter meetings. We had chapter meetings on Sundays. So our our graduate advisors went to church. And maybe I don't know if any of the other ladies went to church and then went to the chapter meeting. But no, it was like you do whatever you did on Saturday night, you wake up try to get ready for chapter meeting and then that's it paying dues I'm not paying tithes and offering I'm paying dues to the organization like people don't understand like that is like what I, I they just don't get it like that is all what's connected to this like if you are so much I was more dedicated and focused to aka uplifting it and like making sure that I followed the rules and and, and do everything that I could and I wasn't even doing that for God Mm. <laughs> my lord that's Crazy. true, that's true. Yeah. but i heard the holy spirit saying um do what do you remember about the conferences mm. yeah yeah that's good that's good god <laughs> um so i remember so it's so many it's so many people it's so many women and so many different women who are very serious also about the organization. And one of the things that's kind of connected to the things that God also started showing me in regards to my journey to the denouncing, because this has been a long journey. This is 
starting from the first day in 2010 to now we in 2023. Like it's it's been a lot. And one of the things was those we have rededication ceremonies. So you have your rituals where you go through the process. And honestly, as I was praying about this, I can't even really remember my thoughts during the rituals. I think I was so excited to be a part of the organization. So, but because as a chapter president, I had to do those initiations. That's when I started realizing the stuff that we were doing and the words that we were saying. And so happening at conferences is we were doing those rededication ceremonies, which is rituals again, to, to connect us, to, to establish the covenant again, those covenant relationships with the organization. So that's, that's the one thing that really stuck out at conferences um, is, and also the fact that there were so many women who were so dedicated and I'm a, and I'm a ministry leader at my church. And it's so funny because I feel like at every church, for those who are ministry leaders, you try to get people to serve. And there's probably more like 10% of the people in your church, you might have 500 folks, but only 10% are serving. But you, I think about like in our Greek organizations, the dedication that people have. So many people probably can be serving in the church, but they time is spent in these organizations. And that's what I saw in conferences, women who like were devoted. And I don't know their personal life as far as Christians or what they were doing at their churches. Some of them were serving their churches as well. But that was one thing that God also revealed to me, like, y'all, so, you're so focused on this. You ain't even, you can't even give me, do an outreach at the church. You can't even go talk or evangelize to somebody about God. You too busy to, trying to talk to people about AKA. So yeah, it, it was a lot. I was like, it's too much, Lord. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Let up. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So I'm trying to connect the dots because you are yeah. a member at large, mm -hmm. PhD president. Mm -hmm. um, you were, were you chapter president, right? Yeah. And chapter president. So like, where, where is the story to you letting it all go? Like yeah. Journey. So, um, so multiple things like God showed me and I ignored it. And I think that's important for people to like, I feel like in my journey right now, people have said, uh, you know, oh, I, I, I think that's really big what you did. Um, if God told me to do that, I would do the same thing. But I just ain't heard from God. So I was like, okay, cool. But what I, what the spirit told me is like, I think there's things that we ignore and we have scales over our eyes. And, you know, we just don't want to see what we can like see right in front of us. Um, my, <laughs> one of my friends who's still in the organization even said, yeah, when I see those videos, like some of them, I don't even watch because I don't want to be responsible for what I hear. Cause I know that when I hear it, I'm gonna have to do something with it because so it's partial disobedience basically. Cause if you're not going to be obedient or if you're going to do halfway, you kind of know, but then you're not going to watch the video to take that next step of conviction. It's just disobedience in general. For me, um, it was that first night, which I told, which I said about the whole sit, doing sit-ups and hearing the girl say what she said about Jesus. And then there's the ritual part, which I can't really remember in that moment, but I remembered the words. As I started to do them more, I started remembering, or I started realizing like, oh, I don't know if we should be like doing this or taking them and kneeling it before the altar with candles and with the shrine and with the founder, it, it was a lot. With the founder's picture up. And I started to realize like, this is not okay. Like my spirit started to say that. Um, and then also with the conferences and the rededication ceremonies, at one point while I was still in undergrad, one of my line sisters at the time, we stopped saying the pledge and the hymn. And so for, for like the viewers, the pledge and the hymn, there's, something that you always say at, at the end of meetings, there's this, this statement that they make you remember, you can't even write it down. So we stopped saying that because we knew that was something was wrong. We would literally be in a circle singing. And then when, it, when people like bowed their heads to say it, we would just look at each other like, that's how you know. <laughs> but instead of like coming out of the organization and feeling all this conviction, I was just like, oh, I'm good. I'm just not going to say that part. I'm not going to say the pledge. I'm going to just kind of murmur the hymn a little bit. I'll be fine. 
So that was that. Um, and then the one of the big things that is a part of this my journey is I work in fraternity and sorority life in Greek life. So I, um, when I graduated from undergrad, I went to get my master's in student affairs to work on a college campus. And so starting in 2015, I worked on a college campus. My goal was to be a director of Greek life. I was like, these organizations are the best. Like when, when they're done right, you know, your kid can benefit. They'll be a leader and this service and all this stuff. And so, um, but the Holy Spirit started like working on me. I worked in Greek life from 2015 to 2019 and the Holy Spirit started working on me because one of the things that I had to experience or I had to deal with as a staff member was behaving. So now you have somebody who was in undergrad who knows what's going on, now a, a staff member. And I was very like um, honest and transparent during my interview process of like, I experienced this, but I don't believe in it because I, I didn't anymore. Um, and so I saw people being hazed, kids getting in trouble. Like I didn't see people being hazed, but people were getting reported for hazing, alcohol, parties. It was so much like negative stuff. And I'm like, these organizations at the time, I was like, these organizations have good stuff, but all it is is shadow with all this bad stuff. And I remember the moment where God kind of convicted me was during the summertime, we always have little, um, interest me not interest meetings but um we talked to students who are interested in joining organizations or greek organizations and i and i in my spirit i was like i gotta get out this job because i can't keep ushering these kids into idolatry like i'm ushering these kids into potentially their spirit being <laughs> completely disconnected from god and then like stepping into this organization and dedicating their life to that and i didn't want to have to go to God and him to be able to like run down the line of all the students that I've literally helped get into these organizations and so that's what he kind of started it was the hazing it was the the all of the, the the issues but then it was that it was like this is spiritual like you are helping these kids get into this stuff um and then the other thing that happened in my job that really kind of like started to make me have a disinterest or a disgust was again the spirit of deception I think the movie what's the movie called that came out about pledging with Trevor Jackson it's on Netflix yeah, girl. Is it? Bernie Sands girl so Bernie Sands pulled out I said oh lord I'm out all right I knew this was a cult I knew it but I'm sorry go ahead go ahead no no because I was like, I'm not going to remember this movie. Like, I need to ask her because I really keep forgetting the, uh, I didn't even look up the title. I was like, Trevor Jackson. I remember Trevor Jackson in it. Mm -hmm. um, so Burning Sands came out. I was working at the, I was working in the um, Greek organized or Greek life, fraternity and sorority life. And we had a viewing because I was over National Hazing Prevention Week. So, so I had to do all this stuff. And so we had a viewing of Burning Sands. And between the NPHC people on the internet and the students online and how upset they were about this movie and this is not this is not what we do and how are they like putting this out there this is not what we're about I'm like come on with your lies like why are y'all lying right now like why are we why are we why are we sitting here lying like come on so like that really like pissed me off because I'm like dang this is not going to ever stop because it's not supposed to. It ain't no God. It's this chaos. It's confusion. It's, Satan is just, he's just in the thing. He's in it. So it's not going to stop because it ain't supposed to stop. So I was just like, yeah, these people don't get it. I can't be around this no more. Like the, the bad was outweighing the good completely. Um, so that happened. And then um, I go to, I was going to a church, Agape Christian Fellowship um, in Fort Myers, Florida. And my pastor, Dr. Phil Phillips at the time, like my spiritual father, father he married me and my husband. He had, a, um, I was very active in the grad chapter and, while after, after college. And um, he had a Bible study on uh, Deeper in the Word series, he called it, and it's taboo topics in the church. So he was talking about tattoos. He was talking about piercings, everything, child. So he started talking about 
fraternities and sororities. And it was so funny because I remember God brought that memory back to me. And some of the ladies who I, I'm close to and are still my friends, they were wearing their line jackets while they were listening to me, while they were listening to this. Um, I know, right? They were wearing their line jackets while they were listening to the presentation. And we sit in there and Dr. Fields talking about Freemasonry. He's like going in, he's starting from the top of like Masons and Eastern stars and how they still connect to Greek organizations and the idolatry, all of it. He's just giving it to us. And we was like, Dr. Phil, and I love him. And we literally said this to him. Dr. Phil, like, no, that's, that's those other organizations. That's not us. Like, we don't do that. We're about service. You know, the little statement that everybody says, we're a non-hazing sorority or fraternity. And we're about this. Like, that's what we said to him. We said that to the, the shepherd of the house. He was like, uh-uh, that, Dr. Phil, none of that. No, that's not, that's not what we do we're that's not what we're connected to our organization is connected to doing good and I remember that and I was like oh my god not in the church house like out here <laughs> so that happened and then we get to this is the big story so this is why this is all of that stuff happened to me and then this is when God like finally got my attention um I go to Transformation Church Miami here in Miami, Florida, and we have this thing called Camp Transformation that we started last year um, in the summertime. It's a full-blown, like, we are at the campsite, we're doing, like, prayer, there was deliverance happening, Taurus Solomon, he's in Dallas, he did a delivery, um, yeah, he did a delivery session or whatever, and I got delivered from some things, and one of the things happened in connection to AKA, so we're at this, cam we're at this camp, and this lady comes up to me who I've never talked to about AKA ever. And she says, God told me to tell you to denounce AKA. And I said, huh? It's Cause I was not, mm. she was like, yeah, God told me to tell you to denounce AKA. And I said, well, why did he tell you to do, this is how I, this is my body language and my tone. I was like, and this is a spirit, and we had a Christian spiritual retreat. And I looked at that lady and I said, well, why did he tell you that? I don't, I don't understand why he would tell you that. Like, there's all these other people who are in here also in Greek organizations. Why are you not going up to them telling them that? And she just looked, she was calm. And she, she just looked at me and she said, I don't know. I'm not telling anybody that because God told me to come and tell you. She was, she was like, he didn't tell me to, he didn't tell me to go to nobody else. He told me to come and tell you. So I looked at her and I, in my head, I did not say this out loud. I just looked at her and in my head, I said, well, whatever. Like I'm already inactive. Like I don't even do anything. So it's fine. I'm inactive. That's what I said. She said to me, and I didn't say this out loud. She said, and you can't be inactive. He says that you can't be inactive. You need to remove your name from the scroll. You need to denounce. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> all right, that's all I needed. Oh, she, she got her ear to the Lord. And, you know, the Lord told her what she was thinking. She told her. I literally, I did not say that to that lady. I was like, because at first I was like, oh, my God, did I say that out loud? No, she looked at me and she said, and he said, you can't be inactive. You need to remove your name from the scroll. I was like, oh, God. Girl, this is a Jesus. worship moment. The Lord is chasing after you. He is leaving the 99 for one. Oh! <laughs> yes. Jesus. But that Jesus. is so good. Mm -hmm. And I that was May 2022. Um, so before that, December 2021, I got married. We had did the little the syrup, the, the strolling, the song, that's the reception girl. My husband is a Kappa, so he, they did their little sweetheart song. It was a lot. I was just like, I done did all this stuff. I done been with AKA for all these years. What, what, why? Why me? Like, what, what do you mean, God? Like, why me? Um, so that was May 2022, August. It took me three months to even return to that conversation because I was like, uh-uh. I knew she literally heard from God, but I still, that spirit in me was like, and I ain't letting you go. Like you saying, it's, it's all right. You, you'll be fine. And I was just like, no, I'm not, I don't think, I was questioning if she even hears from God. I was like, that lady don't hear from God. 
how, how do you start questioning that when clearly <laughs> in the moment I was like, she hears from God, but then afterwards I was like, nah, it's good. She ain't, she ain't talking to God. That's, that wasn't for me. So I'm going back to my journal. I'm in my journal and I'm going back to the, uh, l- the letter that I wrote to God as I was having this, this issue. And it was August and I was sitting and doing my devotional time and God, and I started writing and I was like, okay, God, like confirm to confirm, please confirm I, to me concerning AK, what was said to me about denouncing my letters. Um, I was like, what would you have me to do, Lord? This is what I'm writing in my journal. I'm no longer paying dues. I'm not active. I don't even think about the organization the same. Um, I wouldn't say the women are demonic or the values are the org isn't, but people just take things and they make it worse. So I'm already trying to basically like ration with the Lord. Like it's all right, God, like it's okay. Um, and so then I put, um, people take things and make it worse. I don't know, God, lead me so that I do your will. So now I'm asking him. And so he, (laughs) so then he says, um, I was like, show me why I said, I, if I denounce, I have to explain it to all these people and why. And I don't even know why I just, I don't even know why you want me to do that. So show me why, why would I do this? I don't want to be disobedient. So please let me know. Um, and so he said, oh, and then I'm sorry, the last part is important because of the spirit that I'm dealing with, with people pleasing. I was like, also, I know I am not supposed to worry about what other people think, but what about all these other people who are in these orgs? I don't want to like not be in the orgs. There's people in church who are in orgs. Like, I don't want to be seen different. I don't want people to look at me in a certain type of way, like rationalizing God. Like, why do you have me to do this? Which I know believers do all the time. He acts with people. We try to like, we try to, to try to say no and we, we get scared on them. So, um, so I wrote that out and he said, Oh, and then at the end, the Holy Spirit started working on me. I was like, I also, but I also don't want people pledging themselves to the ideals of an organization. So I said all of these things and I said, however, I don't want people pledging themselves to the organization. I don't want them pledging their heart, their mind, their strength to the organization instead of Jesus. And so then immediately, like the Holy Spirit had me go to the pledge and say the pledge in my, like say the pledge out loud. And he started showing me. And like with the pledge, it's basically, I think I saw another video from another AK. She's right. Like they took a scripture. They took Mark. I got to find the scripture. They took a scripture, whoever created the ritual and they replaced it with AK. And it's, so we're pledging our heart, our mind, our strength to the organization instead of in the Bible of God and the word of God, it says to Jesus, you pledge your heart, your mind, your strength, your soul to Jesus. Um, and then he took me to him and the hymn is public. Like people can Google the hymn that they sing. But one of the things in the hymn, it talks about having a heart that's loyal and a heart that's true. It talks about like de- like dedicating like yourself to the, the ideals of the organization. One of the parts it talks about, um, I wrote it out. He literally had me writing out the song. Um, we'll pledge our faith and united we'll forge a way, greater laurels to win, greater tasks to begin for thy honor and glory today. So again, we're singing hymns for the organization are sung to the organization. And I'm like, how do y'all, how do we not see this? Like, just like we go to church singing songs to the Lord, we singing hymns to the God of the organization, like, which is this idolatry that is continuously happening. And so he had me circle, pledge our faith and said, that's a covenant. He had me circle, honor and glory, honoring, glorifying the organization. This is all like, you're in covenant with this organization. Literally, when that happened, I was on the floor like, oh, God, I'm sorry, Jesus. I was so sick. I was so sick. You know how you go on a roller coaster? Or if you've ever been on a roller coaster, when you go down and your stomach drops, that's what was happening to me. Like, it was like, God, please stop. Don't tell me anymore. Like, stop. I I got it. I got it. But he was like, "Uh uh-uh. You asked me to show you. And I'm showing you. It, it, it was a lot. 
that that is comparison to the moment that God revealed who Minerva was to me. She mm -hmm. was like, she's like, you you know who Minerva is? I'm like, I don't know. Some girl on top of the shield. And God was like, she's a female God. And I was like, she a what? She's a, wait, 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 hold on. She's a what? Yeah. She's a God? And she is all in this organization? Yeah. Oh, circle, we got Minerva, Min uh, struts like Minerva. Yeah. Oh, Michelle, Minerva is on our jackets. I got a jacket. Yeah. Okay, so I, 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 you ain't got to tell me nothing else, God. I'm out. I'm mm -hmm. that's disgusting. Like I wouldn't mm -hmm. have loyalty to another God if I would have just studied who she was. Really no, right. Even the Atlas is on the uh, AKA shield. Like it's on the AKA shield. Yeah. That is a God. Yeah. And I think for some of the members who, <laughs> some people really don't, I, I feel like me, I, I'm in a different place because I have to do those rituals for I remember those things. I think for some people, like they're not going back and really like the rituals is online. Google it and look like it's there. It's not. And because there are so many people who did it when they were young, I wasn't even in a place that I am now spiritually. So I wasn't thinking about none of that. I was just in the organization. But I, I do think like folks are like not going back to the rituals. Um, and, and for me, it was still like a lot of like, warfare and not being comfortable doing what I did because or doing the denouncing part because even after I prayed and I journaled all of that mm -hmm. um I wrote the letter that was so God told me to denounce in May I finally wrote the letter in August and I sent it off but then I didn't even tell people I told one friend my husband and then my line sisters who were my line sisters at the time so now I just call them my friends um but and I told them I didn't even tell my parents because I was just like I don't want to have to start explaining to all these people some people I was like seriously they're not even gonna understand God and I don't feel like having these conversations so I'm just not saying nothing at all but I'm just not connected it's good I'm good then January roll around and I'm getting happy founders they text messages and people asking me stuff and I'm just like I'm not in this but these people don't know that because I didn't follow the I didn't be obedient all the way it was still like partial disobedience I listened to like a um, video that another girl had I started doing that also that's how I got um confidence because I started watching other people online who was talking about denouncing and one of the other girls said that God had led her to like denounce publicly. He was like, you publicized being in this organization. You was all on social media. You was just everywhere about it. But now you can't publicize coming out of it for me. I was like, Jesus. So yeah, it's, uh -uh. it's a lot. So did you, did you eventually go public with your denouncing? So I, um, yeah, so I, uh, January came and I was like agitated that people were like connecting me to AK, even though I didn't say nothing. Even my like my even I think my stepdad, like he even called me and said happy Founders Day. And I was like, I ain't in that org. I was like, I ain't in that, I, I ain't not idolatry. <laughs> I ain't in that idolatry or something. Something silly I said that I should not have said. Cause sometimes God don't want you to have conversations in a certain way. Like you and it, it was just me just being irritated and frustrated and so it caught him off guard and so now he's like what are you talking about and like what do you mean and for a little while he had to sit with that because he was like well why would you do that like why are you not in the organization anymore I have friends who are in Greek organizations like what do you mean it's idolatry and he was trying to like understand it and I didn't even give him the respect or opportunity to because I was so irritated that I just blurted it out and so I had to go back to that and say, I shouldn't have said that to you in that way. And his biggest thing was like, I'm disappointed that you didn't feel comfortable enough to tell me at the beginning. And I was like, it was that spirit of fear. Like, I just thought everybody would judge me and stuff. Or I think it wasn't even that. I just was scared. Um, and so January was when I started, like, I was praying and God told me to go back and tell them. So he... So I, I don't know what I was praying about. I think I was praying about God. If there's anything that I haven't been obedient about, please show me. I think it was during a, a fast at my church. And so I was fasting and praying. 
And he said, go back and tell them. And I knew exactly what he was talking about. That's all he said was go back and tell them. And I was like, dang, I missed the mark. Now I need to do this. So I started in January, February. I started like sending people my my letter because I'm a writer. I like, or I write my emotions, my feelings out. So instead of having these long drawn out text messages and, and uh, phone calls, I just started sending people the letter and was telling them, hey, you need to know that I did this last year. I was scared. I didn't want to tell anybody. Um, so because I just didn't want to deal with people. And I got a lot of support. I sent it to some Greek members um, that I'm close to. And then I sent it to some people who um, are just my family and friends. And everybody like supported me. Um, but it, it was still the conversation of like, that's good that you're, you know, you are listening to God. If God was to tell me that, then I would. But until then, like, he ain't telling me to do that. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, okay. And I, I was rationalizing a lot of, dang God, why me? Like all these other people, you need to tell them too. But I realized for him, it's, there is a bigger story in this and there's a bigger purpose in this. And it's not about, it's not about everybody else. And I had to get out of that. It's God has me on a, a specific walk and it's about what walk he has me on. Um, but the one thing I would say that I did leave out a part of the denouncing is another thing that God showed me that I ignored at one of the conferences. It was our one of our big conferences when um, I blue or something like that. And that only happens a couple of years or every other year. The president at the time, the international president, her daughter, she was supposed to introduce her mom at a, a big dinner or big luncheon. She got on that microphone and she said something of the sorts of you all need to denounce this organization. This organization is demonic, da 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 da. She was on the microphone. It was thousands of women in that luncheon. She was supposed to be introducing her mom. And she said that. And they like kind of like held her hand and kind of got her off of the, the, the stage. And then they they chalked it up to mental health and like, oh, she was going to, she's been going, I think somebody mentioned she was going to a new church. And then I think somebody else mentioned a mental health issue. But even that, I saw that and I was like, ooh. And I thought about it and it sat in my spirit and then I didn't act on it. But I knew I was like, oh my God. So that's even another time, like, God will show us, but we just got to listen. And if we don't, and I think that's also what's hard about this is there's a lot of people who don't understand because unfortunately, some of us as believers don't read the Bible, don't read the word. Some of us are a little lukewarm where we just kind of like, do we do our Sundays? Maybe we do a little Bible studies and then that's it. But when you open up that book and you start to allow the word to the, to transform your mind and you start to allow God to transform your heart, and you start to realize who you are in God, like he's going to show you and you're going to start feeling conviction. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Oh, I just thought it was powerful. <laughs> testimony and do you want to provide do you want to provide your instagram for you know if anybody just want to keep up with you know tori's life mm-hmm. thing, you want to provide instagram? yeah so my instagram handle is at tor so at t-o-r underscore b-e-e underscore j-a-y so at tor b-j so tor underscore b underscore j so yes that's for anybody who has any questions, don't be getting my DMs also arguing with me because I'm going to tell you to take it to the Lord. Take it to God. God told me this. You're going to have to take it up with the Lord. So, yes. But I do want to talk to other people who need encouragement and um, want to just connect. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being obedient to the Lord and opening up your mouth because you are breaking so many chains by just sharing your testimony. It's just that simple. Just sharing what yeah. you want to do. God is going to do the rest. He's going to do the work in the hearts. Okay. So thank you. For thank on. you for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. And thank you for what you do because again, like I, I came up on your video and many others, but 
your videos were also very important. It's just the encouragement part. This is encouraging to hear other people's testimonies because I was in a place where I'm like, nobody else is doing this. Like, no one else feels this way. And the videos that you posted with other people and being your story, it just showed me like, oh my gosh, I have similarities. Like, I'm not the only one who's struggling or who have thought these thoughts or who feel this way. And so I definitely really, really thank you for utilizing your platform and, and being obedient to God and, and doing what um, you, were, you were called to do, which is to bring light to this. And so thank you. Thank you so much for that. Amen. You're very mm -hmm. welcome to God. And thank y'all so much for tuning in and watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Bye. Bye.